Okay, we're back on Wavy.com. Tom Shad with our political analyst Joel Rubin, and this election night is getting more interesting as we roll on. We talked about the voting irregularities in parts of Virginia Beach and Newport News again, mostly talked about by uh, Congressman Scott Rigel, and now we have Governor Terry McAuliffe getting into the act, calling for an investigation. Well, he's the governor, and. You know, the State Board of Elections falls under him, so it would be his responsibility. It's about to the voting machines now we're talking about. The voting about. machines that uh, there's some calibration issue apparently, right. and a number of the precincts, uh, at least reports are that some people were, in m many cases, were pushing Rigel's uh, name and, and button next to him. And Patrick was And it coming happened up. both ways, too. And, yeah, and it happened on the other side as right. well, and they would in most cases i'm sure called over somebody some election official they came over and figured it out and right. got it working and their votes got counted and there I, I mean if they investigate i don't think they'll find there was any miscounting of votes or any fraud or anybody was doing something untoward but i don't know so so what happens the governor calls for an investigation on election night i mean how does this i do so well didn't i hear original uh, around six o'clock calling for uh, them to start using paper, paper ballots. ballots. I'm yes. going, wait a minute, there's only one hour left here. How, what, what difference is that going to make? And I, I kind of looked back at the precinct I was standing out at the time, and the, the number of people who were voting by 6 o'clock had dwindled down to almost nothing. So I was like, it's really not going to make much of a, of a difference. At the end of the day, again, I, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. I think the people who are who got the most votes are going to win, and they would have gotten their votes legitimately. Okay, so early results had Ed Gillespie starting off with a pretty big lead and of course as we go through the precincts i think uh mark warner has definitely closed the gap sure uh and if we are not done with election night yet they Nowhere nbc close. just said this is too close to call at this point so so what is your reaction do you think um, mark warner gets the gets the tide from northern virginia or does well i i, I did let hang on well i i i think most analysts, the pundits, would have said that they would have called this one by now for, for Warner. Obviously, that has not so happened. So this means Gillespie's showing pretty strong. Well, I, 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 I thought he would. Um, I've told people, I said, I'd be shocked if Gillespie won, but I wouldn't be, I'd be stunned, but I wouldn't be shocked. Because, again, Warner was governor for four years. Then you become a senator for six years. And remember, Warner won in 2008. Hagan's won in North Carolina in 2008. That was as good a Democratic year as you were ever going to have. Oh, that yeah. was Barack Obama running the first time. Yeah. You, we all remember the long lines at the polls. Right. Every potential Democratic voter came out then. We had Glenn Nye became a congressman here in Hampton Roads for That's two right. years right then. I mean, that was a complete anomaly. And two years later, uh, Thelma Drake, I think, won, and it went back into the Republican corner again. So 2008 was a was definitely a Democratic year. We're now six years later. You mean Scott Ritchell. Scott, no, 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 an eight, nine won. Nine. You're right, Nid, Nid, and, and then Ritchell won. Nye beat Thelma Drake. Ritchell beat right. Nye. I got it right. Make sure Thank, you. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I just think that for a second. I'm getting older, Tom. <laughs> so am I. See, right. So 14, 10 was a great Republican year. Mm -hmm. 14 is probably a good uh, Republican year. So um, that's why I think. Warner is a, a little bit vulnerable now. It's been six years since he stood before for, for election. It's now been probably 12 years since he was governor, or 10 years since he was governor. So you know, people's memories fade. The electorate changes. Obama's the president now. You know, Back then, we're just coming out of Bush. Right. And so there's a lot of dynamics that, that change. So I'm not surprised that a, a good Republican, and Gillespie's a good Republican, and he ran, I think, a pretty good, ran some great ads, I think. Uh, would not be making up some ground and, you know, and possibly pulling a stunner, who knows. Quickly to the south, North Carolina, Whew. and Kay Hagan, Tom Tillis, uh, that race was expected to be out of the wire. I think a poll that I saw before people started voting was Hagan having a lead of point zero or like point point seven, seven percent. percent. Yes. That's pretty close. Yeah, that's within the margin of error, wouldn't you say? Uh, I would mm -hmm. say it's definitely within the margin of error. A hundred and eight million dollars, the most expensive Senate race in the history of the United States. Yeah. Okay, in North Carolina. This wasn't New York or California or Texas. This was North Carolina. And so there's a lot at, at stake there. North Carolina is going through some major shifts. The legislature, the all all the statewide officers, the governor, et cetera, the legislature is all Republican and fairly right-wing Republican for mm -hmm. a state that had kind of moved to the left or the center for a long Kay time. Kay Hagan was elected in 08, right? She was. With, she was in 08. With Obama. With Obama. So now, six years later, 
she's having to run, it, it's, and she's running against the Speaker of the House. 